All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. Yes, uh, I believe so. Now, we don't do with me from the beginning of the show, and I don't de, uh, collect all the things that we've given her. Because we promised so, Nasina, this is not the best of entertainment from our top stories to our newspaper reviews to our better interviews. And right now, we're going to be having a very, very exceptional interview because this one uh, now concerning women in politics. Now, who better to discuss this with us uh, than Princess Fola Shade or Labanji? She's a politician and the National Deputy Chairman, Association of Local Government Vice Chairman of Nigeria and Vice Chairman Ikorodu Local Government. You are welcome, Madam, to the Good Morning Ninja Show. Good morning, sir. All right. It's, it's, it's a pleasure having you on the show this morning. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. All right, so it's, it's a culture on our show to always ask our guests uh, how they are doing because we know that there's a pandemic now and a lot of things have changed, uh, a lot of expectations have changed. So honestly, how are you doing, madam? Whoa, uh, I think I want to say I'm blessed to be alive. Hmm. Um, right now, it's going on, so let me get the plus. Um, just give God all the fun. Um, funny so far. Hmm. Now we all uh, COVID-19. Yeah. It's good. So, do you think we're ever going to get back to our normal of before, or we have to get used to this being our new normal moving forward? Honestly, I don't pray that we go back. Hmm. I pray that we die something better. Because, hmm. you know, there's a new now. So, whatever we had, it wasn't sustainable. Yeah. It's Taxes were there a lot. Of, so, uh, COVID 19 was worse. But hmm. beyond COVID 19, yeah. I think we're going to be a lot better. And uh, yeah, I'm very hopeful. I like that. You know, a, a couple of times when I have conversations like this with my guests and they say, no, well, we're getting used to the new normal and we would, be, we would like to go back a bit, but uh, because of the situation, we can't. But you were saying that uh, COVID-19 also exposed us to uh, a, a new way of operating and I would say a better way to, to some level, to some extent. So this is, uh, this is quite uh, remarkable coming from yourself. Now, uh, let's, let's dive right into today's conversation. Uh, and we're talking about women in politics. Now, the reason why we're having this conversation today is because uh, we, we also see that uh, politics has been tagged as, as the general masses will call it, a dirty game. And a lot of women don't think that uh, they need to be involved in politics, even to the, to, to, the, to the lowest part of just exercising your voting rights. They see it as, nah, it's not, it's not in my place. I, whatever happens, happens. Even if I vote, it doesn't count. So, but for somebody in politics, yourself, how has it been for you so far? And uh, what even prompted you to get into politics in the first place? For me, nothing is love. Um, the only language is love. And when you really have the love of the heart, you know, Everything you do comes with its own challenges. Mm -hmm. So there's no game. But uh, the bigger picture for me, I want to make sure I can quarter in building this way. And um, you cannot do it at a time to occupy. Mm. Try your friend. I spend most time trying to tell people why it's very important to be sensitive to whatever it is around us. Mm -hmm. And more and more now, COVID-19 has a lot of things that we all need one of mm -hmm. One person does affect another person. So we need to take chance, act response, mm -hmm. look out for one another. And if you really want to do nothing better in politics because mm -hmm. um, the simple thing to politics yeah. is relevant, it's value added. Yeah. Be concerned about 
other people are caring from the heart passionately. Mm -hmm. And when you say adding value, it's of making things better. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody it's easy, especially um, coming from, from in this country, culturally, everything. Yeah. Women in the uh, back of banners. But if we know that the country can be better, mm -hmm. more women into active politics. Yeah. You know, uh, natural, natural. We multitask. A lot of things do from the heart. So you need to educate a woman and definitely know that she is going to be blessing the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, raising this, whether the ones you didn't, you know, women are born, you know, to edify her. Mm -hmm. You know, feel, feel yeah. the way we are wired. Now, the, uh, the reason why I asked that is I was having a conversation with one of our, my analysts here uh, some time back. We were discussing uh, the 35% the uh, all allocation portion for women in politics, that uh, the bill that's being passed, that he wanted to have this as a necessary and compulsory 35%. Now, we had a conversation, and he was saying that uh, the reason why most women are not, uh, don't get involved in politics is because the system the political system itself does not uh, make uh, room for women participation, doesn't accommodate women participation. He made uh, an example of meetings. Sometimes they set meetings at night. Political parties have uh, meetings at night. And for a woman who is probably uh, married with children, she wouldn't be able to attend such meetings. And this was his argument. And he was saying that these are some of the reasons why women just see it as, okay, I can't get myself involved in this because I also need to keep my home front in check. And uh, giving so much of my time into politics might affect uh, the home front. So this was his own, uh, his, his own point of view. But so for someone who is in the system, how, uh, w what would you say about that? And how have you been able to, you know, work around it moving forward for you? Him saying that is not a question. That's the goal to scare all of us. Number one, I guess, been stereotyped. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, Oh, I think I'm having a little bit of tech, um, technical difficulty. C c can you hear me now? I, I think I lost your audio. I think I lost your audio for a bit. I can't really hear you anymore. Okay, um, we, would, we would definitely try to uh, reconnect with uh, her again because this is a very, very important conversation we're having this morning. And I would just uh, bear with us, give us a little more time to uh, handle that because we know a lot of things have changed due to the coronavirus pandemic and we can't have our guests in the studio. So this is why we do this via the internet. And you know how it is, uh, these things happen. But uh, when we're talking about women in politics and it's very, very necessary, very, very, very necessary to have this conversation. And as it is, um, we've been talking talking to uh, a woman who is in politics. I'm talking about Princess Falashade Olabanji. She's a politician and that's the National Deputy Chairman of the Association of Local Government Vice Chairman of Nigeria and uh, Vice Chairman in the Korodu Local Government Area. Yes, madam, welcome back. Thanks. Okay, so uh, you, were, you were explaining to, to, to us why uh, that stereotype is not actually true uh, because you are uh, you have first hand experience. So please uh, lead us through that conversation again. Now, not all me that at night. Uh, I think so many things are put out there to scare. Hmm. Um, but uh, I think. I I'm, I'm still having difficulties with the audio right now. And, uh, okay, we would, we would probably uh, 
call you back. Let's try and uh, cut the call and reconnect again and see if we can get a clearer um, um, audio connection because we would need to hear exactly uh, the exact words she's saying regarding these things. Because yes, we're talking about women in politics and uh, this is uh, this is sprung up due to the fact that the 35% allocation into politics, political offices uh, is being pushed in the House, knowing that uh, the involvement of women should be uh, made a mandatory thing in any political party, public seating, whatever it is, uh, regarding the good governance. So that is what, uh, that's one reason that brought us into this uh, conversation today. So uh, we'll go on a quick break to try and get this uh, technical difficulties sorted out. But uh, when we come back, we're hoping that we would have her back with me in the studio again to wrap up this conversation on women in politics. Don't go anywhere. We still do here. And I said a good morning, Nigeria show. Uh, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And yes, we did on top of one very, very interesting interview. We're speaking to Princess Fola Shade or Labanji. She's a politician and the National Deputy Chairman uh, of the Association of Local Government Vice Chairman of Nigeria and also the Vice Chairman uh, in Korodu Local Government Area. Now, Madam, welcome back. Sorry for the uh, technical situations we're having, but due to the pandemic, this is what we have to do to make our interviews come through. All right. So we can go on now. I believe so. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear now. <laughs> and my last name is Ola Banchi Oba. All right. Okay. 
So um, our conversation is still, uh, we're, still, we're still running us through the fact that the narrative of uh, politics being a dirty game and why women are not interested in it, you actually made that clear that uh, these things are not always as it seems, and uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, wrong n narrative in things like that. But I want to ask, further ask this question. Seeing the fact that a lot of women don't even see politics as something they should get into in the first place. Now, and you decided to do this and you are thriving at it. How would you say uh, uh, it, the, the encouragement level for women to, to participate in politics has been? Because a lot of times we see a lot of men being in, in politics and these men also encourage other younger men to get involved. But how uh, much of encouragement or sensitization do the women get from, act, from women who are actually in politics? as it stands. For you, you are, in, you are serving in that space right now. Well, politics, like you know, is a numbers game. Yes. And you can't be what you don't have. So a lot of us don't come to this space. Definitely, you're not going to see much of more women. Mm -hmm. And over the years, um, people have had their coaches as getting in. I mean, uh, somebody told them, would not willingly allow their wives their or their family to quickly go in there because they, they think about the security, mm -hmm. the, so it's, it's not that easy. But also, you've got to be available, ready, or um, you can actually be given your things. Mm -hmm. And it's also, because most times, as a woman, you have to work twice as Okay. You know, because stereotyping before was that men a lot of tough things. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, believe that actually women are wired, able to stand for no matter what. Mm -hmm. Think about all that we struggle with, and we still, you know, flourish. Mm -hmm. So we just encourage more women to get in the space, watch the system, a lot of the political practice, make it easier. Uh, I can talk about um, even the ground, you know, mm -hmm. you pay almost nothing as compared to the men. Yeah. So all those things are supposed to make gender friendly, to be able to make more women yeah. to come in space. But I guess um, we need that touch and feel. Somebody to hold us up and let's go. And um, there's more money to done in actually encouraging more mm -hmm. come on board. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this brings me to the next uh, question of a conversation. Seeing the fact that uh, women who run for office, who are um, able to, you know, be in that political space to run for office, we notice, or there's been uh, a, a narrative that uh, when it comes to cases like that, women still don't even support women outrightly. Like, um, you can see the conversation of having a, a female president, for instance, in Nigeria has been on the rise for quite some time. And seeing the fact that women, uh, you know, we have a, a huge number of uh, women in the country as it is, why can't we have a, 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 a female um, um, representative that's going to probably come out and have the full support of women to actually, you know, take this uh, presidential seat as it may, but it's it's been a, a different story altogether. So, what do you have to say about that? And do you think it well, is, and do you think it's time for a female I, president in Nigeria? What do you have to say about that? Just those two questions in one. Being a woman alone doesn't make you a, um, a candidate. You know, you've got to be and prepare. Okay. And, you know, it's not easy being a presidential candidate. It's a process. Okay. So, in that process, a lot of women are not available. But I know we're not where we used to be. We're not where we need to be either. Yeah. But we are definitely on our way there. Okay. So, not very soon. I'm a woman president. Hmm. 
So as it is now, seeing that uh, the, the House is looking at passing a bill of 35% inclusion, compulsory inclusion for uh, political parties, uh, for public offices and things like that when it comes to politics, what is your take on that? And do you think this would actually help in boosting uh, the involvement of women in politics? Do you think they would be interested seeing the fact that they have this uh, opportunity available right now? I think that's an awesome one way forward. But if you really look at the first part we're talking about, uh, the gene thing was like so many decades ago. So what has long gone even past mm -hmm. um, the 35%, looking at 45 feet. Yeah. So we want to celebrate if 35, if we can truly achieve it. We're, we're hoping that this actually works out because uh, a lot of ladies are saying they are ready to get into politics now, uh, but that has been an excuse of not being uh, included in this situation. But right now, this is is here, and we're looking at it being uh, um, something of um, to be confirmed. But moving forward, do you think that it is something we need to start um, um, sensitization from? Um, from the from the from the tender age to the girl child to understand that she has what it takes to get into politics to rule. Do you think it's something that where we should start doing now, or uh, we, yes. we wait? Yeah, no, no, no. I think it should start from the farm front, the home front. Yes. Every girl should be should be raised mm -hmm. at full capacity, mm -hmm. not limited. That to the woman, she says certain things. Like when I was born, I uh, well being the first child, I found out for my father because he raised me even like a guy. Okay. I was a girl or whatever. No, mm -hmm. He helped to higher standard, higher responsibility, taking charge. Mm -hmm. And I what has prepared me for today because my father helped me out. My mother was always loving, loving, old, fragile, mm -hmm. all this. But my father wouldn't have. Hmm. More so, though, at some point, the boy, my younger brother, yeah. they were ready to do that because they are boys. They are more special. Mm -hmm. They are, you know, prepared, whatever, you know. But I see now, um, all that is changing. Yeah. I know my father, when he passed away, he used to be one. Mm -hmm. And if he has that great feeling, when he plays a child in Africa, she will go on and go. Mm -hmm. No limits, okay? Yeah. Right now, not just the girl child, it's boy. Everybody raised at their capacity. Mm -hmm. Post COVID 19, a very competitive world, you know, so yeah. extra to make sure that we prepare them for that good journey. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much uh, for this conversation. It's been very insightful, and it's good to hear for some, from someone who is actually acting in service, because a lot of times they say, eh, now because say she not did it, then why should they talk? But you are in the hems of affairs, you are into politics, and like you said, it is not as bad as it seems, uh, because a lot no. of times people just use those, uh, that as excuses to be like, I don't want to be involved in this because I cannot handle all the uh, things that come with it. But uh, thank you very much, Prince. Says for Lashali for this conversation, and we'll definitely have you again uh, to discuss on some um, other related uh, political issues. But due to time, we have to just uh, wrap this up. But thank you very much for your time, and uh, we you. we believe that you're going to have a splendid day ahead of you. You too. All thank right. you. All right. All right, uh, and I believe so that conversation makes sense. And to all the women out there who have been uh, looking for a way to get involved in politics, I believe that uh, we decided to bring uh, Princess Falashade to you so that you can see that she's uh, she's uh, she's an example. And uh, like she, what she said, we need to have that mindset, that mentality of leadership, be concerned about the society and be concerned to make a change, not just concerned to complain, but be concerned to go out there and make a change. And which way, how would you make that change is by getting involved 
in the affairs of politics, and that way the change would would be would be achieved. Okay, so we still get another conversation here. We'll get after this, uh, but uh, trust me, uh, this was very insightful, and we promise the next one will also be very 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 insightful for you. So make it not go anywhere. If you can just get a bottle of water, get coffee or something, just relax. We're still here. It's still the Good Morning Ninja Show. When uh, I come back, I'll be talking to our next guest.